You can start now. All right. Well, first, uh, I'd like to say thank you, London, for having me uh, stream in. It's a pleasure. Um, today, I'm going to talk about the, the new OWASPA mass project, which has been uh, going on for about a year. The, a map, the OWASP project started in July, which is addressing a gap in the uh, security community for accurate uh, DNS enumeration. <clears throat> All right, so quickly a little bit about, about myself. I'm Jeff Foley, also more often I think known as uh, CAFIX online. I'm the project lead and founder for AMAS. Uh, also, I'm the US manager for penetration testing and red teaming at National Grid. And you can find me at these locations uh, online. So what is AMAS? The answer to that has uh, it's changed over the year that it's been uh, under development. I mean, it started off as simply, we need a better DNS enumerator. I, I think it's grown now to that we still need a great uh, DNS enumerator, but also a way to give us better network mapping of an organization, organization's attack surface. And personally, I think also a way of visualizing our findings so that we, we can make better use of uh, the data collected. This project was once just a tool. Uh, now it's a suite of tools. Right, right from the beginning, there was a Maltigo transform for this because honestly, a lot of this was driven by people saying, uh, I don't know what I look like to an attacker on the internet <clears throat> and I wanted to show them. <laughs> so I used Maltigo to give them, uh, you know, visually show them what they look like to a, an adversary. So now we have a handful of things that we have the command line tool, we've got the Multigo transform. Uh, people wanted to be able to just grab names off of certificates. So we have a separate tool for that. And there's more to come. I have tools that are gonna be for providing better visualization, interfacing with graph databases. There's all sorts of uh, goals for this project now. All right. So quickly, I wanted to, <clears throat> I mean, there's all sorts of information about this on the GitHub page, but real quick, if you're looking to grab this tool and start playing with it, if you're on Linux and you don't mind using Snap, I would say that's your best bet. It's quick and easy to get a mask through Snap. Also, if you have Docker, I mean, you can just build the Docker image, run uh, a mess as a with Docker. Or if you already have a Go development environment, just build, you know, download it and build it with Go. <clears throat> These are the three uh, easy ways to get to get a mass right now. I'll talk about uh, later our goals to have more additional easy ways to get get a mass. <clears throat> so we're expanding this project. Uh, there's a lot of uh, goals that will probably just never end. <clears throat> we'll never we'll never stop uh, adding data sources. I imagine we'll always be trying to make this easy to uh, get a hold of across more OSs and think, you know, adding package managers, adding better testing, all, all sorts of things like that. But <clears throat> right now I'd say the, the real big goal is we're refactoring a lot of the code. We're adding new tests. We're adding new package managers. And uh, people are always coming out with new functionalities they want to see. So we're doing our best to keep up with the demands from the user community. Those are the high priority goals right now. And if you're interested in contributing to that, 
uh, I would say, please do, you know, go to the GitHub page, go to our Discord server, and uh, we can talk about uh, contributing to the project. So I was asked to uh, share lessons learned as part of this presentation. And <clears throat> pr probably the two things that during this project, I ended up saying, oh, wow, that's interesting, because I don't, I don't see other people either discussing this or, or sh using this as an existing technique in pr previous tools, <clears throat> excuse me, is so I, I haven't seen another tool that uses this technique that I, I've kind of called alt and sweep, where you take the, the techniques from alt DNS, essentially the alterations of names, and you re resolve those, get the IPs, and then do reverse DNS sweeps around those IPs, take those names resolved, do more alterations and just keep that cycle going as long as you can until you're not getting anything new. That process often results in more names than any other technique that you can use for DNS enumeration. I mean, I've seen this tool sit for a long time and just keep doing that and continue to provide new names. So that seems like a lesson learned to me in, uh, something that should be just considered a mainstream or common approach now if if anyone's going to be creating a, D, a dns enumerator <clears throat> also during the 12 months that i've been working on this i've seen a lot of names that once you had to go get yourself they're now available just from data sources i mean data sources are really opening they're providing a lot more names and you, you don't even have to have paid accounts or anything like that with these providers. So what that means to me is if you're a bug bounty hunter or a pen tester, red teamer, you can get more and more of this data passively without sending anything to a target. That's a pretty interesting, important fact I, that I, uh, wanted to share. And like I said, this has changed quite a bit just in 12 months. We'll see where, where it is in another 12 months. All right, so like, uh, like it was said earlier, I'll be demonstrating this tool. I was given permission to run this and share the results uh, for both OWASP.org and fb.com so first things first if someone could just tell me that they can see this what am is this visible yes <laughs> i'll assume i'll assume that's yes yes <laughs> so what we're about to see is the results of a mass against owasp org which is a small domain it's a very quick enumeration So what we have here is the output from the, um, these are the, the real time findings. And then down below, it's the summary information where it, it breaks out all the different ASNs and subnets that these names fell inside of, which can be interesting when you're uh, doing this kind of reconnaissance from this information we can generate this visualization so again this is small so 
perhaps it, uh, it's hard to say how how useful this is when the, there's only 18 names uh, discovered. <clears throat> but still, I would kind of say having the structure to the network can be very enlightening because it's much easier to see what's of interest when it's laid out like this for you. So that's OWASP.org. Here we have FB.com, which is a quite a, it's a larger domain. As you're watching this, the, the, I'll uh, tell you a little bit about what happens behind the scenes. This tool starts off by going out to various data sources and pulling the publicly known information about the domain. And it uses that set of names as a starting point or a, <clears throat> a place to begin and then it performs some of these other techniques I mentioned earlier, like the alt and sweep, where now it's creating uh, uh, permutations on those names. It's sweeping the IPs around these uh, discovered IPs. And it's just finding more and more. It's, it pulls uh, names out of certificates, things like that. So here it's completed. It found 386 names. It shows you the breakout of, so how many were scraped, how many came from certificates, how many were alternative names re uh, resolved. From that, we can create this. Now, I, I understand that's probably pretty hard to see where you are right now. I uh, zoomed in on it a little bit to create this uh, image. When you, when you create these visualizations yourself, you'll see that, for instance, this was a D3 uh, HTML page. So these are interactive. You can zoom in on them. You can uh, see what each of these nodes represents and what the relationships are to the other nodes. Well, of course, what I have right here in front of us is just a snapshot. But the, the actual visualizations can be quite useful. But it's a much more, as you can see, uh, complicated network than the uh, OWASP network. But still, there's a lot of structure, and it gives us places to begin looking if we want to dig deeper into our target organization. And that's what I have. Any questions about this tool, about the project, where we're going with it, how to contribute? Questions from the audience about this project. I urge you all to go and uh, play with it. So it's uh, pretty easy to install. It looks very awesome, especially when you start navigating this. Um, uh, let me just quickly switch and check if we actually received anything on Slido. Uh, Sherry, did we get anything on Slido? Oh, yeah, there's questions here. Uh, from Hi, I'm just wondering about the Facebook recon that you've done. Uh, did you find any internal IP addresses? Yeah, uh, Jeff, the question was, did you find any internal IP addresses? That was the question. So the only time 
I've discovered internal IP addresses is if the mistake's been made that DNS records have been created for those uh, internal IPs and then they've been made publicly available. Otherwise, I don't often discover internal IPs. Okay, that was the question from the uh, from Facebook, so I think they were very concerned about that. Okay, another question. Uh, well, for for you for FB.com, I, I have to say I didn't spend it much time investigating the findings. I had to put this together fairly quickly. Uh, I guess I'll dig deeper into that later. Cool. <laughs> okay, we have another question. Yeah, uh, question: Do you interrogate internal, like ex uh, expose DNS servers for the company, for example, DNSSEC, and try to verify the results? Yeah, did you hear that, Jeff? That was about the DNSSEC verification. If you could repeat the question, just because I, I didn't hear most of it. I'm sorry. Uh, do you uh, check this against the company's DNS, and do you any way to like brute force DNSSEC? Yeah, do you check this against the company DNS? Well, so currently, the way that the results you're seeing output from this tool come from the DNS resolvers that are selected. Now, what that means is if you run the tool as I did during this demonstration, there's default resolvers that are used, they're public resolvers, but anyone can uh, specify their own resolver if they wish. So <clears throat> beyond that, there's no verification of the findings against, say, a valid uh, set of DNS records. OK, thanks. Uh, any more questions? OK, I guess this is it then. So uh, thank you very much, Jeff. Thank you so much for uh, dialing in from America. Thank you.